Hi everyone and welcome to Essential Oils 101. I'm Mallory and I'm the founder of the Vibrant Life Collective, which is a business aimed at teaching and empowering people to improve their overall health and well-being so that they can stop feeling tired, foggy, and sluggish all the time. One aspect of my work is that I teach people how to leverage the power of essential oils. Essential oils really are becoming more of a commonplace in um, practitioners' offices, in um, people's households, and it really is a big world and a big topic to be discussing. I know that there's a lot of information out there on essential oils, and so it can be really hard to wade through the information and figure out what's true, how do I use them, um, are they safe? And so it really is my intention today to provide you with more clarity on what essential oils are, how and why you should be using them, and then I'm going to touch on the top 10 oils I believe everyone should have in their home. I want to start off by saying I really believe that you've been guided here to this information for a reason. Essential oils have played a really powerful role in my life as far as transforming my health and getting rid of toxic products that are in my home. I think that it's important for people to know this information and I'm really excited to be sharing it with you today. I want to give you just a few seconds to get settled into where you are. You might be listening to this in your car, maybe you're listening to it in your office or your living room. But just take a second to take a few deep breaths, get settled into where you're at, and prepare yourself as we dive in to this information. I'm so thankful that you're spending the next 45 minutes or so with me learning about this. It's going to be a lot of fun. It may feel a little bit overwhelming, but I hope if you have any questions that you'll feel, I hope that you feel free to reach out to me. So just take the next couple of seconds, take a few deep breaths, settle in, grab a drink if you want one, maybe some cold water, hot tea, coffee, and then we'll get started. All right, let's dive right in. So my name is Mallory, and like I said, I started the Vibrant Life Collective, which is a health coaching business. And one aspect of that business is that um, I help teach people how to leverage the power of essential oils in their life when it comes to achieving their health goals and really just supporting their body's natural ability to be its unique and divinely created self. So I first came into contact with this first that I put on this slide when I was in college and um, I was studying nutrition at UT at the University of Tennessee. And I really loved this, this Bible verse because it just resonated with a lot of aspects of health and wellness that I find really interesting, um, primarily food and then also how we can um, make allies with plants in our natural world for the healing of our bodies. And so this quote says, fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fail. Every month they will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing. And that's found in Ezekiel, and I really just love it, especially the last line, their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing. So even back in biblical times, people were using and leveraging the power of plants for their body's healing. I wish that I had known that back when I was in college because that was really a time in my life where I was not taking care of my body. Um, I was taking full course loads at school. I was working a nannying job um, for a family that didn't have one, two, three, four kids. They had five kids, all under the ages of nine. I loved that job and it served me so well because I love nurturing people, especially children. But I really was, between the two, run pretty ragged. I was also navigating a whole lot of things going on in my personal life, and I really didn't have energetic boundaries up where I needed them. This led to me developing anxiety, having some blood sugar issues, feeling overall just depressed and no energy, and I really didn't know where to turn and what to do. Doctors couldn't really give me an answer. They said, ah, maybe you're just stressed out, um, but they, they didn't have any solutions for me, right? So I decided it was time to get back to basics and really focus on um, building my health from the inside out. So I started incorporating more whole foods into my diet, exercising more, going to counseling when I needed it, all of these things to help take care of my body better. 
And around the same time, I had a friend approach me and say, hey, have you ever thought about incorporating essential oils into your health journey? And I really hadn't before, but I decided, hey, what can it hurt? I'm an avid learner. I love to learn about new um, you know, healing modalities. So I decided to get started with them and they really have just changed my life. So if you're here, congratulations. I feel like you're showing a willingness to learn and to be led and to improve your overall health and well-being. So let's get started. What are essential oils? So essential oils are volatile aromatic compounds. Now, there are other chemical compounds out in the world that are also considered volatile aromatic compounds. All that means is that these particular chemical constituents evaporate in the air really quickly. So when you open up a bottle of essential oil, you can smell it immediately. That's because those scent compounds, they um, evaporate into the air rather fast. They're extracted through various distillation methods. So we might distill them via steam distillation, which is when you put um, plant matter in a big vat with steam, and then the steam actually pulls the essential oil out of the plant the steam and the oil are then extracted and then later separated. So um, they're super, super concentrated. What's interesting about essential oils is those volatile aromatic compounds, those chemical constituents that evaporate into the air quickly, um, they are what are also beneficial to us for our health. So they get to work on the cellular level really fast. This slide here is just an example of steam, the steam distillation process. There are other distillation methods as well, such as cold pressed, which we might use when we're distilling um, essential oils that have a larger chemical structure that can't be extracted via steam. So a lot of times citrus essential oils, for example, will be expeller pressed or cold pressed. Um, during that distillation process. And that just means like the peel or the rind is pressed really hard and the oil is extracted mm. that way. Here in this slide, you can see that you've got a steam boiler. So you've got water here that's being heated up that puts steam into this big vat. The steam interacts with the plant material and then the essential oil and the water are um, distilled over into this container and then separated. And so really essential oils can be extracted from various parts of the plant. It could be their leaves, flowers, bark, stem, root. It just depends on wherever the most concentrated area of the plant, um, well, it depends on the area of the plant that has the most concentrated essential oil in it. And depending on which beneficial constituents you're looking for would depend on where from the plant you're doing that extraction. So why should we use them? Well, over here on the right is doTERRA's Wellness Lifestyle Pyramid. doTERRA is the company that I trust the most for essential oils. It's the one that I sell for. Absolutely love them. Um, and they've created this Wellness Lifestyle Pyramid. And at the top, you have proactive medical care, and then you have informed self-care. The way that we are able to incorporate essential oils into someone's life is really through the lifestyle. So we're looking at the bottom half of that pyramid. We're reducing toxic load. We're gonna rest and manage stress. We're gonna exercise and we're gonna eat right. So you want to use essential oils in, these, in those ways. The ways that I like to focus on the most are in reducing toxic load, they're effective at solving everyday problems without side effects, and they help us practice preventative self-care. So if we're looking at reducing toxic load, when I say that, I'm really referring to home products and personal care products. Now you might not have heard of the term reduce toxic load or toxic load, so what is that? Well, toxic load just refers to the amount of toxic things that your body comes into contact with on a daily basis. So when we leave our house in the morning and we go out the door, we come into contact with all sorts of different chemical constituents and things and pollutants, toxins in our environment. And a lot of times we don't have control over those. It could be in the air that we breathe. It could be in the um, things we come into contact with at work 
or in school or in the places that we shop at. So we don't always have the most control over those things that we're coming into contact with, but what we do have control over is the products that we use in our home. And so when our body comes into contact with these toxic things, these pollutants and whatever else, it has to work hard to then eliminate those things from the body. And so our organs of elimination get to work. And those are like our liver, um, our lymphatic system. Those work to release toxins from the body through our pathways of elimination, which are our skin, um, our colon, our urinary tract, um, our sweat, things like that, right? So if you think about it, if you go out into your environment every day and you're bombarded with toxins and pollutants and things, and then you come home and you're putting toxic pollutant things on your skin, you're using them in your household products through air fresheners and all these really nasty chemical -y things, your body's never getting a break from having to constantly eliminate toxic crap from its system, right? So if you reduce your toxic load in your home, then you're giving your body a greater chance to heal itself because it's, you're giving those organs of elimination a bit of a break. Um, so I really do like to focus on that. It, a statistic that blew me away was the average woman puts on 515 chemicals on her body every day without knowing that she's even putting those chemicals on her body. And what's even more concerning is that 60% of what she puts on her body is absorbed directly into the bloodstream. That's pretty interesting stuff. So what you put on your skin, what you breathe in through the air are all just as important as the food that you're eating. So then the other um, aspect I like to look at is that essential oils are effective at solving everyday problems without side effects. So an example I can use for that is if I have a headache, I might use peppermint oil on the temples of my head. I might breathe it in um, and apply it to my forehead. And I use that as a first line of defense before going to grab Tylenol or ibuprofen or something like that. You certainly can use those, but I personally like to try something that is not as taxing on the liver or on, on my body um, before I reach for something in the medicine cabinet. So essential oils are effective at, at solving all sorts of everyday problems like that. And then the other aspect I like to look at is preventative self-care. And, um, you know, we really don't have health care in our country anymore. We have a lot of sick care. So if we can prevent ourselves from getting you know, sick in the first place or coming down with some sort of um, nasty bug or a you know, chronic illness type of problem, we, we're really setting ourselves up for more success. So one way I like to look at that is by reducing something called oxidative stress. Now, oxidative stress causes a lot of inflammation in the body. It has to do with free radicals that are roaming around inside of our body through chemical reactions. And I won't get into all of the minutia of that. If oxidative stress and free radical damage is something that you're, you're like, oh, I'm a little interested in that, um, and you want to learn more, please reach out to me and let me know, and I'd love to talk about that with you, but I'm not gonna get into the details of it just yet. Um, I'm gonna try to keep this presentation pretty simple, but. What you need to know is that oxidative stress causes damage to our cells. It damages our protein. Um, it can in, impede um, DNA replication in the body, and it really can um, increase the rate of aging in the body as well. So you, I'm sure you've heard of eating foods that are high in antioxidants. Um, a great example of this is blueberries. Blueberries are considered a superfood. They're a high an antioxidant food. They help reduce oxidative stress in the body and thus reducing that type of inflammation. So the medical community actually uses a, um, a scale to rate the antioxidant power of specific foods. So again, like I said, blueberries are considered really high on that scale and they actually have a rating of 2,000 to 3,000 on that scale. That scale is called the ORAC scale. That's O-R-A-C, if you're interested in looking that up. Um, so blueberries rate on that scale 2,000 to 3,000. So they're considered a really high antioxidant food. Well, something super interesting is that pure, unadulterated essential oils actually rank 100,000 
to 1.5 million um, as far as antioxidant power on the ORAC scale. So they really, really have the potential to help us reduce oxidative stress in the body, reduce inflammation, and help our body get to work in its most natural way. Ultimately, I guess I want you guys to take away from this that you're responsible for your health and you're also your biggest advocate. So this is a great way to incorporate a tool into your preventative self-care practice. So why use doTERRA anyway? What's the big deal with them? Why do we like them? What's cool about them? Um, I'm so glad that you asked. <laughs> Let me take a sip of water real quick. Hold on. So doTERRA actually comes from a Latin derivative that means gift of the earth. My number one reason why I chose to go with doTERRA when sourcing essential oils is that they're actually the industry leader in purity and quality standards. Um, they have so many rigorous testing you know, practices in place to make sure that essential oils their essential oils are free of any contaminants. You want to be extremely careful when you're sourcing essential oils. I really can't stress that enough. A lot of companies nowadays are producing essential oils and they're cutting them with synthetic fragrance, with cam carrier oil, so you're not getting a pure oil. Um, you know, if you take one that internally that has some sort of crap in it that you don't know about, that can do a lot of damage to your body. A lot of the research that we, are not research, but articles that we've seen that showcase, you know, dangers of essential oils really come from the fact that these essential oils are not pure and their quality standards um, are not high enough. And so you really want to make sure that you're getting pure, unadulterated essential oils. And doTERRA really does have the best, uh, you know, out there in the market. They, their standards are very strict. They actually use... This group over here on the right, the APRC, which is the Aromatic Plant Research Center. They're the center that actually does the third party quality and purity testing for doTERRA. doTERRA is one of their biggest clients. Um, so you can go onto their website if you want to find out more information, but they actually produce the quality and purity standards, like I said, the, the testing that's done there, but then they also have tons of research articles on um, new and emerging research as far as therapeutic benefits of essential oils. So they're a great resource to have. I also love doTERRA because they do something called native sourcing when they're sourcing essential oils. So they make sure that they're getting plants from a lot of times areas of the world where the plant is native. So that's where it's naturally grown. It naturally occurs there. A great example of this is lavender. Um, lavender originated from France. And French lavender is like world renowned as some of the best lavender. The soil is the best there for growing lavender. The climate is the best there for growing lavender. They get just the right amount of sun, just the right, the right amount of rain, all of these things. And so when you're getting a plant that is thriving and you're sourcing essential oil from a thriving plant, you're going to have a better quality plant. So a lot of times folks will ask me, well, I've heard of other essential oil companies that own their farms and so they're able to quality control a little bit better. You know, how does that work with doTERRA? And really this, this native sourcing program gives them a, uh, gives them the ability to be sourcing the best plants. Um, so that you are getting the most potency, which is really important when you're spending money on on a tool that that you expect to work properly, right? And so then, if you're a conscious consumer, you might think, well, you know, if they're sourcing frankincense and from Boswali trees in Africa, and they're sourcing tea tree from indigenous places in Australia, and they're sourcing wintergreen from Nepal, you know how is that affecting, you know, indigenous people or, um, you know, people of rural and developing countries where these oils are being sourced? And I, if you're asking that question, I think that's fantastic because I ask those same types of questions. It's really important to make sure that we are impacting those people in a positive way. And doTERRA really does do that. 
a lot of times oil companies will come in to these third world countries or developing nations and they will reap and pillage and take whatever they can and leave the people without any natural resources. Um, they don't pay fair prices for the product that they're buying, etc. So what doTERRA has done is really formed an ally sort of relationship with these people. doTERRA teaches these farmers how to form farm cooperatives so that the buying power of the farm is actually with those people instead of with doTERRA. They also teach them how to form distillery cooperatives. They go in and um, help build schools and wells and all of these wonderful things. And so, the, like I said, the buying power is with those people and they are learning how to create income for themselves and sustainable income and they're becoming good stewards of the earth because they want this income to continue. They don't want to just use up all the natural resource and then be done with it. And then doTERRA is able to come in and say, hey, we can be a consistent buyer for you guys if you're producing a quality product. So it really is a really great um, sourcing model. It's called their co-impact sourcing model. And if you want more information about that, please let me know. I would love to go over that with you. Um, let's see if I missed anything. Oh, one other thing I did want to say as far as purity and quality standards, the APRC actually said that 80% of commercially available pure essential oils are adulterated. 80%, you guys. So you don't want to be purchasing these from Walmart, you know, from the gas station, from cr the grocery store. You really want to be sourcing essential oils from a quality company, okay? So how can we use essential oils? Well, there are three main ways I like to look at them. You can use them aromatically, that's breathing them in through the air. You can use them topically, or you can use them internally, that would be ingesting them. Over here on the right, I've got a picture of a, a cold water diffuser. That's something that you put um, water in and your essential oils, you flip it over and turn it on and it produces this nice little, it looks like steam. And so your essential oils are released into the air and you can breathe them in. Um, in the middle, I've got a picture of some topical usage. That's just applying the essential oils in the hands and then putting it on the body somewhere. You can also ingest internally, like I said, through food, drink, um, or taking in capsule form, a couple drops under the tongue. We'll touch on those different ways a little bit more in depth, but first I wanna look at the safety. These are some of my key safety guidelines when using essential oils. Um, when you purchase from me, I do make sure to link you up with the safety guide book that doTERRA has uh, uh, produced. It's, I can just send you a link, it's super easy, in an email and you can look at it. But I want you to be able to feel like you can use essential oils safely and effectively. So the first way um, I, I like to tell people about is just making sure that you're diluting essential oils before you're applying them on the skin. This helps to do two things. It helps you to minimize your skin sensitivity that you might have to a particular oil, but then you're also gonna see the max benefit from the essential oil by diluting. So what does that mean? So when we're talking about diluting essential oils, we're talking about taking the oil, and putting it in what's called a carrier oil. A carrier oil is simply just any oil that you use to dilute an essential oil. That could be something like coconut oil, olive oil, it could be apricot oil, jojoba oil. There are many different carrier oils that you can use. So for every three drops of carrier oil, I do one drop of essential oil. It's a really good dilution ratio. Again, like I said, diluting it, it's gonna help minimize skin sensitivity, but then you're also gonna see the max benefit from the essential oil. If you remember, we talked about how essential oils are volatile aromatic compounds. They evaporate really quickly. So when you put them in a carrier oil, which is an oil that doesn't evaporate quickly, you create a barrier between your skin and the essential oil, and it holds that essential oil closer to the skin for longer giving your skin more time to absorb it, and it is then able to uptake more of the essential oil and those beneficial constituents that are gonna get to work in the body. You also wanna check your bottle for usage instructions. A lot of these essential oil bottles from doTERRA have a supplement fact sheet on the side of it, like a little label, and it'll tell you if you wanna take it internally, how to dilute it, 
Um, and so you want to make sure that you're checking those bottles for usage instructions, okay? You want to keep away, keep oils away from your eyes, the inside of your nose, and the inside of your ears. It's okay to breathe them in, but you don't want to get the oil itself in your nose. Those mucous membranes in our eyes and our ears and the nose are really a lot more sensitive and um, uh, just can get really irritated easily. So that's different than the skin that's on the outside of our of our body. We don't want to get it on the on the inside of our nose or our ears or eyes. So you also want to be aware of hot oils. These are oils like oregano, peppermint, cassia, which is similar to cinnamon, which is another hot oil. These oils, if you're going to use them on the body, you want to make sure that you dilute them. Some essential oils are okay to use as neat. That just means undiluted. Um, but these hot oils, there are others, but hot oils, you wanna make sure that you're diluting properly. I saw an article one time that talked about how someone put cinnamon in their bath and they didn't dilute it and it caused some burning on their legs. You, you just wanna make sure that you're not doing that. That's dangerous. I also, I was thinking about it the other day and I was like, why would anyone put like oregano in their bath unless they wanna smell like a big vat of boiling pasta or something <laughs> but just being aware of your hot oils is really important and then you also want to be aware that some citrus oils can cause sun sensitivity so if you just put some lemon on or something like that you don't want to take that and go out and get into the sun it can cause some sunburn um, it's okay if you go outside but you don't want to go lay out in the sun after you have just put lemon or orange or something on your chest and then um, or you don't want to go into the tanning bed or something like that okay so let's look at aromatic usage. This is breathing the oils in. So aromatic usage has a lot of beneficial um, properties. The main one that I like to focus on is the emotional support that it can provide. When breathing essential oils in, they act on the olfactory system in our brain, which is our sense of smell. And then that part of our nervous system is actually tied to the limbic system of our brain. The limbic system controls our emotions, our hunger, our memories, heart rate, blood pressure, sex drive, a whole host of things. So if you think about scent and memories, for example, there might be a particular scent that you breathe in that reminds you of a time when you were a child, or you might um, breathe in a particular scent and it makes you feel happy and bright and uplifted. That's because of how the olfactory system of the nervous system and the limbic system work together. So they're really great for mood support. Um, you can take one drop and put it in your hands, rub your hands together, cup your hands over your nose and mouth and just breathe in deeply. That's going to get that those aromatic compounds straight to the brain and have a direct impact on the limbic system. You can diffuse them in a cold water diffuser, which was what I showed you a picture of earlier. There is diffuser jewelry now, like bracelets that are made with porous stones that you can put essential oils on and this kind of disperse throughout the day. I love to use essential oils on the ends of my hair. So they interact with the natural oils in our hair and kind of hang out and linger in the hair for longer. Sometimes I won't even notice the scent in my hair anymore and I'll go somewhere and someone says, oh, you smell so good. And I'm like, oh yeah, I used, you know, orange in my hair today or, you know, whatever scent was feeling good to me. Um, an example of the effect that they have on mood. So in the morning, you could get up and diffuse citrus oils, which are really bright and happy and uplifting. Peppermint is really energizing. And then when you come home at night, you could diffuse really relaxing and grounding oils like lavender, cedarwood, ylang ylang, all of these are really calming and relaxing to the nervous system. This is just a uh, little diagram of how essential oils and the olfactory system work. So as you can see there, this person is breathing in the, the essential oils, those aromatic compounds, the, which give the fragrance off, enters through the nasal passageway and interacts with olfactory nor neurons. And so then the scent travels until it reaches the olfactory bowl, which you can see right behind the person's eye. And then the olfactory bulb is tied to the limbic system of the brain. So it says via the olfactory 
bulb, the aromat, the aroma, excuse me, is sent directly to the center of the brain, to the limbic system where it's processed and released and releases neurochemicals that can be relaxing, stimulating, sedative, etc., depending on the essential oil being used. So it really is a powerful way to utilize essential oils. Another way you can use essential oils is topically. So you could, this is just applying essential oils to the skin. So we touched on dilution and why that's important. I just listed here a couple of carrier oils that you could use. There's fractionated coconut oil. If you're familiar with coconut oil, you know it's solid at room temperature. Fractionated just means that the coconut oil has actually been processed to where it's liquid at room temperature at all, all times. If you're gonna apply essential oils to the face, I recommend using jojoba oil. It's really um, one of the few oils that's the closest to our face and our skin's natural oils, so the skin absorbs it easily. Whereas if you use a heavier oil on the face, you might see it doesn't absorb as well. Jojoba oil is readily uptake, uptaken by the skin, so it's a great one to use for, um, for skin care for the face. You might use almond oil or grapeseed oil. There's apricot oil. There's all sorts of different carrier oils that you can use. You can find those at your local, you know, health food store or local, like, a lot of grocery stores are carrying them now, too. You might have to shop around a little bit. Um, doTERRA does sell fractionated coconut oil pretty inexpensively, too. So you could use those in massage. You could add them to a hot bath. Again, you want to make sure that you're avoiding hot oils. Don't use those in the bath at all. And then any other essential oil that you would use in the bath, just make sure you dilute before you put it in the bath. Um, you could wear essential oils on the body um, as an alternative to artificial fragrance. Like forget body mist, forget perfume and all of that stuff. That is so yesterday. It is super toxic, not good for you. Um, so instead, why not use an essential oil that smells really great, but then you could also be getting some health benefits or emotional benefits from it as well. If you haven't seen the documentary Stink on Netflix, you really need to go run and watch it. Um, it's really, really important and informative. It basically just talks about the artificial fragrance industry. And long story short, it, that industry is not regulated for safety and efficacy. And because of a loophole in our government systems here in the US, um, manufacturers don't have to disclose what ingredients are in artificial fragrance. So they could literally be anything. And artificial fragrances are really some of the most toxic and carcinogenic compounds that we come into contact with on a daily basis. So really reducing that in your life is going to make, it can make a big impact in the long term. A lot of people will ask me, well, where do I apply those? You could apply them to different pulse points on the body. So behind the ears, the back of the neck, insides of the elbows wrists. Um, really, it just depends on, you know, where you apply depends on what your what your goal is or what outcome you're trying to achieve. You might put it on the bottoms of your feet. The feet are really absorbent. Along the spine is going to give you a little bit of a quicker action as far as uh, impact on the nervous system. You might apply it to the tummy. You know, you might use ginger or peppermint on your tummy if it's hurting or you're experiencing some nausea. Um, you could do the temples. You could apply on the face, like I said earlier, for skincare. So really where you apply depends on the, the goal you have for using that oil. And then the, uh, the last um, way to use essential oils that I wanted to touch on is internally. And so that's ingesting oils in food or drink. And I have to stress it again, sourcing properly is so important, especially with internal usage. You don't want to be taking essential oils that have been cut with synthetic fragrances with, that, have con that are contaminated with you know, pesticides or herbicides or any of these nasty things. So make sure that you're sourcing from a quality essential oil company. doTERRA is the only one that I trust, um, and they really make a superior product too, so you're going to get more bang for your buck. There is some controversy as to whether or not essential oils are safe to use internally or not, and a lot of that does come from, you know, people using poor quality ones and having negative results. But the reality is that the food and beverage industry has been doing this for a really long time. 
Um, there are some essential oil companies out there that are certified with a GRASS certification, and that just means they are generally regarded as safe. That's what G-R-A-S, or GRASS, stands for. That means that they're safe to use in food and in supplementation. So like I said before, the doTERRA essential oils actually have a supplementation fact on their label. Um, and so they, they are safe to use internally. You can add them to food. So a lot of times in the winter, people will put peppermint essential oil in their brownie mix, or uh, they might add oregano into their pasta sauce on the stove. And it does not take a lot. So you do want to be careful and you know just remember that these oils are super concentrated. It doesn't take much at all. And so for a brownie mix, you will probably just do one drop. Or to add the pasta sauce, you're probably just gonna do one drop. It doesn't take a lot at all. Um, you can add them to water. So I love adding lemon or lime or grapefruit to my um, to my water bottle in the morning. It just gives it some extra flavor, puts a little more pep in my step. Um, I do recommend if you're gonna do this, to use it in a stainless steel water bottle as opposed to a plastic like Nalgene water bottle. Um, plastic is porous, so essential oils can kind of get in there and uh, hang out for a while and cause some like like the flavor is just going to hang out in there and might get kind of nasty. So I recommend using those in um, a stainless steel water bottle. And really, like I said, it only takes about a drop or half a drop. And then you can also supplement with them by taking them in a veggie capsule. Or I put an example here. I take an omega-3 supplement from doTERRA. And it has all sorts of fish oil in it and different omega-3s. And then it has essential oils actually added into it as well. So this is a great way to get the, or harness the power of essential oils um, internally and they get to work faster when you use them internally. Um, and so I love using them in this way. So let's touch on the top 10 oils real quick before we finish up. Um, I think that everybody should have these in their home. They're such a great starting and jumping off point because they have so many different uses. I'm not gonna go into every use in here, obviously, because they really are endless and I don't wanna overwhelm you too much. But let's just jump into these real quick. Some of these oils may be single oils by themselves or they may also be blends of different oils together. So the first one I wanna to touch on is peppermint. You definitely wanna avoid the eye area with peppermint. Um, it is a hot oil. Again, super concentrated. One drop of peppermint essential oil is the same as drinking 28 cups of peppermint tea. So super powerful, but really, really beneficial. It's um, as far as mood and energy, it's really invigorating, super uplifting, very energizing. Sometimes when people get up in the morning, they'll take a drop of it and put it on the back of their neck to help them wake up. Um, I have peppermint inside of my doTERRA face scrub that I use, and I use that in the morning, and it just like wakes my nervous system up. It's awesome. You can also use it for headache and sinus relief. It's really great at opening up the airways, helping to decongest the nose, and I love it for, uh, for a headache if I feel one coming on. You can also apply it to the tummy for digestive relief. Peppermint's been known for um, you know, centuries for its digestive benefits. And so if you've got a stomach ache or something like that going on, you can dilute it in a little bit of carrier oil and then just apply that right to your stomach. One of the most popular essential oils has got to be lavender, right? Everybody knows about lavender. Some people say it smells like old lady, other people super love it, but um, the big takeaway is that it's just calming and relaxing. Lavender is known as the Swiss army knife of essential oils because of how many different uses it has. So in addition to being calming and relaxing, it's also uh, really great at opening up the throat chakra it's actually considered the um, oil of communication. And so if you're into energetic work like that, lavender is definitely one that you wanna have around. It helps calm the nervous system. And um, again, you know, we're talking about it being calming and relaxing. A lot of people will diffuse it at night, or I, I think I touch on this later, but I would take the Breathe essential oil blend from doTERRA, which is really, um, it has peppermint and eucalyptus and a lot of like open airway type of stuff. And I would pair breathe with lavender when I was going to have an anxiety attack. So, you know, when you're having, you feel a panic attack coming on, your nervous system is in fight or flight mode. Well, 
Lavender is so fantastic at just calming that right down. It's really relaxing, really grounding, and it's, it's just such a good oil to have. It's great to use for minor burns. You know, you touch the stove top really fast and now you have a minor burn on your hand. Put some lavender on there. It's great for skin healing. I'll also apply it if I've got some mosquito bites. I don't know about you guys, but mosquitoes love me, and I'm in the deep south, so I get them all the time. Um, if you just put a little bit of lavender on those guys, it really does help stop the itching. And then lavender is also really antibacterial. So um, again, like I said, great for minor burns, great for insect bites or cuts and things like that. The next one I want to look at is oregano. Again, that is a hot oil. I mentioned that before. It's really antibacterial and is great at supporting the immune system. It's fantastic for respiratory health. You may have heard of taking oil of oregano if you've got an upper respiratory infection. Um, some people might ask me, you know, what's the difference in just taking oregano leaves that are dried in a capsule form versus taking oregano in you know, essential oil um, for the body. Well, the easy answer is that the essential oil is just uptaken by the body a lot faster because it's more concentrated. And so it can get to work in the body a lot quicker. Um, you can apply it to the bottoms of your feet or along the spine. If you're feeling like you need an immune system boost, if you're starting to come down with something, you can also cook with oregano. Like I said, you could put it in pizza sauce or pasta sauce. Um, and cooking with essential oils is a really like a, a whole cool little um, field all on its own. But oregano is a great one to have around for immune support. Lemon is one of the citrus oils. It is so uplifting and cheerful. I'm from Florida originally, so I just absolutely love all the citrus oils. Lemon, tangerine, wild orange, grapefruit, they're so happy and bright. Um, and I love diffusing those when I'm starting, when I'm feeling down or I'm stressed out. They really just help brighten my mood um, and brighten my mornings. I love to use them in the morning. Um, something that a lot of people don't know about lemon is it's actually a really great degreaser. So I think of lemon as my solution for sticky situations. Um, if you've ever brought something home that you just bought, like a new, I don't know, some sort of glassware, Tupperware or something, and it has those price tag stickers on the bottom and you can never get the glue off, Lemon is a lifesaver for this. You can just put a drop or two on there, let it sit for a couple of seconds, and then you can just scrape that glue right off. Um, you can also use it with your dishes. I've used it quite a few times if I've burnt something on the bottom of a pan. I'll just take a little bit of hot water and cover the bottom of the pan. I'll put a few drops, maybe like four or five drops of lemon essential oil in there and let it sit. And then I've got like the easiest scrub job in the world to just scrub that pan right out. It's really easy. You can also add it to water for extra flavor, like we talked about before. You know, fill up your favorite stainless steel water bottle with some filtered water and then add a drop of lemon oil on there, and that's going to get to work in the body. Um, it contains limonene, which is its main beneficial constituent, and it's really antimicrobial. So that's antiviral, antifungal, antibacterial. Um, it's really a powerhouse and a great immune booster as well. The next one I want to look at is Digestin. This is actually a blend from doTERRA. Give me one second. Let me get some water. So Digestin contains ginger, fennel, peppermint, star anise, and a couple other really goody, good uh, essential oils in there. And it's great for digestive health health, I should say, not help. It does help with digestive problems, though. Um, helps with gas, bloating, stomach pains, nausea, motion sickness. You really can use this in a variety of ways. You can apply it topically onto the tummy so that it gets to work pretty quickly in the bloodstream. You could breathe it in, and it does help that way as well, or you could take it internally. I love Digestin. I use it before I go on a car ride because I get car sick really easily. Um, I've also used it when I've gotten some intense stomach pains. I have a friend that doesn't tolerate dairy very well, and when she accidentally eats something that has dairy in it, she can, she can feel it in her stomach, and she'll put some Digestin on her stomach, and it really makes a difference for her. 
So this is a great one to have in the home. Um, I, f I find you'll use it pretty frequently. The next one is another blend. It's called On Guard. And On Guard is really similar to Thieves Blend, if you've ever heard of that blend. It was a blend that was developed in the medieval times to have actually help ward off the plague. So this is a powerhouse essential oil blend, you guys. I love this one. Um, it contains clove, cinnamon, eucalyptus. Um, you know, we talked about the ORAC scale earlier and um, antioxidant foods and the antioxidant power of essential oils. If you remember, blueberries range at a 2,000 to 3,000 on the ORAC scale, right? Clove essential oil is over one and a half million on that scale. It's super, super um, powerful as an antioxidant. So helping to reduce that oxidative stress. When you're doing that, the body's immune system is able to work more efficiently. So it does help um, help you not get sick as, well, as often. It really has a warm and spicy scent to it. It's a little bit sweet. I say it smells like Christmas in a bottle. So I love starting to use On Guard um, in the fall all the way through the winter. That's what I'll clean with. Um, that's what I'll diffuse to kind of like help purify the air and help ward off any environmental threats. So it's really antimicrobial, like I said. You can use it internally. You can use it topically. Um, my boyfriend has been a little bit sick recently, and normally when he's sick, I definitely get sick, but this time around, I've been applying On Guard to the back of my neck a few times a day, and I'm not having any symptoms or getting any sorts of sick, so um, you can use it in that way, or you can diffuse it in the air, and doTERRA actually has a really great On Guard product line that includes things like laundry detergent, hand sanitizer, cleaner concentrate. Um, re they're really a great resource for non-toxic cleaning products that have this really powerful blend in them. So if you're looking to minimize or reduce the household cleaners that you have in your home and get away from those toxic products and incorporate some more natural ones, um, doTERRA is a great resource for that and I'd love to get you some more information. So just reach out, let me know, and we can get you started with it. All right, let's move on. We are looking at Breathe. Again, this is another blend. It contains laurel leaf, melaleuca, which is tea tree, eucalyptus, and lemon. And really, this is our respiratory blend. So it helps maintain open airways and easy breathing. It's fantastic when you've got um, any sort of upper respiratory or sinus crud going on. Um, I find, like I said before when I was talking about lavender, that it helps me with anxious feelings. So I'll take a drop of breathe and a drop of lavender and put it in the palm of my hand if I'm feeling anxious. I'll rub that together cup my hands over my nose and my mouth. I'll breathe in deep and it just gets to work at kind of like helping ease that feeling of having a heavy chest or like an elephant is sitting on your chest. I feel like, okay, I can breathe again. My brain's getting oxygen and the lavender just helps calm my nervous system down. You could dilute this in a carrier oil and put it on your chest for a natural vapor rub. Um, you can also diffuse it in the air to help break up any sinus junk. Um, it really is just a powerhouse blend for respiratory health. So let's look at tea tree here. Uh, doTERRA calls their tea tree melaleuca. I think that has to do with it being sourced in Australia. Um, it's sourced from the melaleuca trees. It's really skin cleansing. I'm very, very high antimicrobial, antifungal, antiviral essential oil. A lot of times it's used in hair care products and skin care products as a means for extra cleansing. Um, it's really helpful for minor skin irritations. It's great for cleansing surfaces around the house because of how antimicrobial it is. You could add a few drops to your favorite cleanser or put a few drops in your shampoo. A lot of people have seen success with using tea tree for dandruff and dry scalp. Um, you could also use tea tree in any sort of, like we were talking about for cleaning. You could use it in a DIY, do-it-yourself um, surface cleaner or refrigerator cleaner, anything like that. This is just a really great cleansing essential oil to have around. We just got two more to go. So we're gonna, gonna look next at frankincense. This is considered the king of essential oils. I absolutely love frankincense. I use it every day internally and on my skin. 
Um, it is a really, really powerful essential oil in that it's full of a bunch of different chem chemical constituents that are beneficial for us. It has anti-aging properties. It heals wounds. It's healthy uh, or it promotes healthy cellular function. And it has a really calming and peaceful uh, scent to it. So I apply frankincense um, to my face every morning. Sometimes I'll do it just with a carrier oil. Other times I'll add it to my favorite moisturizer, just squeeze a bit of moisturizer in the palm of my hand, add a drop of frankincense, and then I'll apply it to the face. Other times I will take a drop of frankincense and put it under my tongue in the morning when I get up as a means to kind of get that, um, get to work on the cellular health level. And other times I will use it if I've gotten a cut or something of that nature. So let me just take another water break real quick while you're looking at that stuff. All right, so yes, the king of essential oils. Frankincense is really an awesomely powerful essential oil to have. If you're familiar with the Jesus story, you know that frankincense was one of the um, gifts that was brought to baby Jesus, actually. So I love having frankincense in the home. And then the last one that we want to look at is the deep blue. And this is, again, another blend. It's not a single oil like frankincense or tea tree, but it is a blend of various essential oils that are so awesome for muscular health, okay? So it really is like an alternative to Icy Hot, if you're familiar with that cream. It comes in the form of an, the essential oil blend, which is over here in this small little bottle, five milliliter bottle, but then you can also get it in a lotion form as well. It's really soothing and cooling. It's best used topically. So you're not gonna take this one internally. You're not gonna diffuse it in the air. You're just gonna use it topically on the skin. So it's warming and cooling at the same time, similar to Icy Hot. And that's because of key components like wintergreen and camphor that are inside of it. You can use it on the wrists for support if you um, type a lot in your job, if you're on your phone a lot. Um, I've applied it to like the meaty part of my thumb before when it gets sore. You can use it to help ease tense muscles in the shoulders and the back. It's great to add for, to massage. Um, I'm on my feet a lot for, for work. Um, I attend bar at a local um, tap room and my feet get so sore by the end of the night. And so sometimes I'll come home and just apply some of it to the bottom of my feet and it feels so good. It just gets to work on the muscles immediately. And it's great for post-workout recovery as well. Helps to fatigue, um, sore, helps to soothe fatigued muscles um, and really, really gets to work relieving any sort of tension. So those are the top 10 oils. I'm really, I'm glad that we looked at those. I know that that can be a lot of information. Um, it's a lot of different oils, but as you can see there, these are just 10 of the many essential oils that are out there and just a few uses for each of them. So it really is a big world out there um, when we're looking at essential oils. And you might be feeling drawn to a couple of the ones that I mentioned or all of them maybe. And so some of your you know, I have some questions about how to get started, and I just want to touch on that briefly. doTERRA has a really cool wholesale membership program that's similar to like a Costco membership. So um, you pay $35 for the year, and then you get access to wholesale prices. That's 25% off of retail prices. When you go to renew after a year, it's $25 to renew, but you also get a bottle of free peppermint oil. So you're basically just buying a bottle of peppermint oil and then you get your, your membership again. That's a great way to increase the affordability of these essential oils. But if you're really looking for some big savings, I really recommend people get started with a kit. Um, that's how I got started and it was great because I was able to experience a whole range of essential oils, um, learn how to incorporate those in my life uh, on a daily basis, and I saved a tremendous amount of money. So when you enroll with an enrollment kit, your $35 wholesale membership price is actually included in the price of your kit. So you could get started with one kit and realize, hey, there is an oil I wanted to try, but it's not included in my kit. 
Well, now you can get the wholesale price on that additional oil that you wanted. So that's really fantastic. Um, the most popular kit that people get started with with me is the Home Essentials Kit. It comes with 15 milliliter bottles of the top 10 oils that we just covered in this, in this presentation. Um, plus you get a diffuser. That really retails at a $366 value, but you know, you pay $275 and you end up saving $91. So that's a fantastic, um, a fantastic kit. If you don't have a diffuser, that's a great way to get that covered as well. Um, and then you get some of those awesome oils that we talked about before. To give you an idea of the savings, you pay $275, but frankincense by itself is a $90 oil. It is an expensive oil because of how, how powerful it is and just the sourcing that goes into it. And so you're saving a lot of money when you buy a kit. And then the other one that people get started with is the Family Essentials Kit. It really is kind of like a, I call it a sampler kit. So you get those same uh, top 10 oils that we talked about before, um, but they come in five milliliter bottles as opposed to 15 milliliter bottles. You also get On Guard and Peppermint beadlets, which are like some little breath freshening beadlets you can pop in your mouth. Those are really cool. Um, you pay 150 for that kit and it retails at 200. So you save $50 right there um, by buying that kit. And it's not, I want to remind you that it's not just a kit that you're buying. You know, when you sign up with me, I give you a free console and we learn, or I help to teach you, I should say, how to use your essential oils. We go over any questions you have about them. I give you a list of my favorite essential oil resources, books, and tools so that you can learn how to use these effectively. Um, I give you a link to doTERRA's safety guide so that you can develop confident usage with your oils. And you get an essential guide, essentials guidebook, which is a publication from doTERRA. It's a little booklet that goes over the oils that are in your kit, plus some other products that they offer so that you've got some uses for your oils right off the bat. What I don't want you to do is sign up and buy essential oils and then just have them sit on your shelf. That's a waste of your time and your money. And you know, that's not what we're here for. Um, I really want to help you develop um, your education and um, practices with these oils because it, they really can make a big impact on your life. So just to close out, I want to reiterate, I really do believe that you've been guided to this information for a reason. Yet this really is such a unique opportunity for you to learn how to support your body naturally. And I hope that if you have any questions that you'll get in touch with me, uh, you can just shoot me an email at the vibrant life collective at gmail.com, or you can check out my Instagram. I am also on Facebook Just search Mallory Williams and I'll come up. And I just want to thank you so much for spending this time with me. I have so enjoyed teaching with you and I can't wait to help you get started with oils. Okay. Have a great day and I will talk to you soon.